Hello, hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. I call to order the June 6, 2017 meeting of the Washington County Board of Education. Do have a quorum present this afternoon. At this time, I will ask Vice President Stan Stauffer to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You're not going to ask me a bunch of questions like you do the students, are you, about what my favorite <laughs> subject is and all that, are you? All right. I just wanted to. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. Okay. No, there will be no interrogation. Okay. Okay. At this time, I'd like to move for approval of today's agenda. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. All in favor of the agenda? Six zero. And now for the approval of the minutes. Madam President, I uh, make a motion for the approval of the work session minutes dated Tuesday, May 16th, 2017. Thank you, Mr. Gessert. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Is there any discussion of those minutes? Any additions, changes? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor for accepting those minutes? Five and abstaining. One abstention. Madam, Sec uh, Ma Madam President, uh, I motion make a motion to approve the closed session minutes dated Tuesday, May 16th, 2017. Thank you, Mr. Gessford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Any discussion? Changes, additions? Okay. All those in favor of accepting those minutes? Five to zero. Abstentions? One. And I make a motion for the final uh, approval of the business minutes, uh, meeting minutes dated Tuesday, May 16th, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Any discussion or additions or corrections to those minutes? On the vote? What do you want to do? Switch it up. Really? No. I thought Can we go ahead? Mike left. He didn't stay for the, for the business meeting, did you? Not for the business no. meeting, I don't think so. What, was I here? No, no you only <laughs> came for the closed session right. last time. I got sick, that's right, okay. I was sick. All right, that's so right. all those in favor of approval of those minutes? Three, four, and abstentions. Two abstentions. Thank you, Mr. Gessford. Okay, at this time, um, we'll have public comment. That's it. We have no one signed up in advance to speak. Is there anyone who would like to take this time during public comment to address the board. No? Okay. <coughs> we'll move on to <coughs> the next agenda item, which is the interim superintendent's report. Well, good afternoon, board members, members of the community. Uh, today, we have our superintendent report split into two pieces, much like we have a number of other times. I'm very excited that we have our teacher of the year with us uh, this afternoon, our trig star champion with us and numerous uh, state, championship ap state championship athletes with us this afternoon. So in a few minutes, I'm going to ask Carolyn Holcomb to come up and just share just for a few minutes about being named Teacher of the Year for Washington County Public Schools. Following uh, Ms. Holcomb will be Nicole Marshall. She's a content math specialist. She'll share just briefly about the math, the Trigstar math individual. And then Eric Michael will report on our state championships here for the spring. So at this time, uh, and following Ms. Holcomb's comments, I'm gonna invite the board, if we would go down front like we did kind of the last time. Uh, we're gonna, have following uh, Ms. Holcomb's comments, we'll go down. Uh, I have a check for her that on behalf of the Board of Education, we wanna present to her a certificate from me. Uh, and we'll greet her, and then immediately following her will be Nicole, we'll stay down front uh, to meet our Trig Star champion and teacher. And then the athletes will be introduced by Mr. Michael. So, at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Holcomb to come forward 
and make any comments that she would like to here at the table uh, regarding being named 2017-18. Uh, you actually can sit at the table and talk to one of our bikes there. Well, teacher, I may never get to ride my bike. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like think, but I think I'm loud enough. Can you hear me back there? I only knew minutes before I could count that I was going to be named. Uh, but I was given my talk report, and the talk report just was saying, oh, what a great honor it is to represent Washington County and how excited I am to uh, work with this. <laughs> Okay, and Carolyn, if you go. Give her a medal. Thank you to the board members and to Dr. Michael for giving the time to recognize Jason Menser today. I would also like to thank his parents and family members and his principal who are all here to support and recognize Jason. As a junior at Williamsport High School, Jason took first place in the Trig Star competition at Williamsport. He took first place at Washington County and he also placed first for the state of Maryland for the Trig Star competition. He has tested in the national competition and we haven't received those results yet, but we are behind him 100%. The Trig Star program is an annual high school mathematics competition and national test which promotes the study of trigonometry in high school and acquaints high school mathematics students with the practical application of trigonometry. We at Washington County Public Schools work with Michael Boyce, who is the chair for both the Appalachian chapter of TrigStar and the program for Maryland Society of Surveyors. Um, we work with him to incorporate surveying and the application of trigonometry into their mathematics classrooms. So at this time, I would like to ask Jason, Jason Menser to come forward to be recognized. And thank you in congratulating Jason with me.
Good afternoon. Um, I have several athletes here today. The, we had a very successful spring uh, championship season. Um, several track teams won championships this year, along with several individuals that we have today. So what we're going to do is got a lot of people to organize, so we'll try to get through this, but um, make sure we have everyone. So I'm going to call up Boonesboro girls track team right now. Just girls, if you want to make your way up this way, line up. Boonesburg girls track team was the 1A state champions this year. The members of the team that are going to be recognized now, Cameron Harper. There you go, you come up here. Suzanne Harris. <laughs> Emily Kimball. Here, I'll get you. Emma Lang. Bethany Lohman. There you go. Aaron Longerbeam. <laughs> you get to flip your hair, though. <laughs> Rosemary Menang. Ainsley Plumador. <laughs> Kylie Talbert. I also want to recognize some individual champions from that team as well that are here today. So, girls, if you want to circle back around. The 4x200 uh, team was state champions, so members of that team are here today. Cameron Harper. Twice. Allie Leone. Two medals. She's not here today, sorry. But Kylie Talbert. And then in the 300 hurdles, we have champion Emily Kimball. Also want to note that Bethany Lohman is not with us today, or she is with us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bethany is a pole ball champion this year. This is her second consecutive championship in the 1A. And as we like to tout our Athletic programs were educationally based, so we'd like to talk about academics as well. Um, two things this girls team has done this year. One, we talk about um, performance in the spring. They won the outdoor cross country championships in the fall for 1A. They also won the indoor cross country, or excuse me, indoor track championships for 1A this year, and now outdoor championships. So they swept all the running of championships that the MPSSA puts on. And as well as said, talked about academics, they have a team GPA of 3.78. Congratulations, girls. Mom, <laughs> parents. <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> no Snapchat. Just be finished with the athletes that are next. Jason, if you'll hold on as well, and I'll be glad to do this. Can everybody track up a little bit? Can everybody look okay for athletes? <laughs> okay. So while we're doing that, let's have the Boonesboro boys team line up. Boonesboro boys were the 1A champions as well in track and field. And with us today is Billy Anderson. Come on, Billy. Good job. Ben Hardings. <laughs> Nick Kidwell. <coughs> Donovan McClellan. Up. <laughs> Sorry. Aiden Sailing. Oh, I got you. Henry Schmidt. And Steven Smothers. 
what happened? <laughs> and we're going to bring Nick back around. Nick was the state champion in shot put this year for 1A. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Good job. And also with us today, we have their, one of their coaches, Coach Sean Cutsale. Uh, the boys track team, excuse the boys were also the indoor champions for 1A this year as well as outdoor. Um, and their team GPA was 3.54. As I told Coach Becky Walter, the head coach, it looks like they have some room for improvement next year. We got to get the boys to get that cross country championship. So, <laughs> again, fine work, great job for uh, these student athletes, and congratulations. Thank you guys. Okay, next we're going to bring in Clear Spring Unified Track Team. In blue or who gets green? All right. Josh, back okay, Clear Spring Unified Track Team, they won session one, which session one was devised of the teams of less than 20 athletes on our team so it was a, if you will small school session uh, they were the division one gold winners which means they were out of division one they are the state champions so members of the team this year Abigail Angles Good job. Samuel Banzoff I'll get him. And while Sammy's getting his uh, award, I have to say, Sammy has been part of the state champion for tennis as well as bocce in all three seasons at, while he's been at Clear Spring. Doppel. Paige Gazelle. Amanda Keelan. Team manager, Tyler Buzzard. Assistant coach, Sharon Rubeck. Head coach Aaron Wadle. Good job. Congratulations. Okay, South Hagerstown Unified Track Team.
Okay. South Eggerstown was session two, which is the teams, the bigger schools, teams of more than 20 uh, members on their track team. So they were session two, division one, gold state championship winners this year. First uh, athlete that we have here today is Krista Braid. Skylar Jenkins. Destin Paul. Lorraine Paul. Is that your brother? Matthew Wagner. Assistant coach Elizabeth Grimes. And head coach Elizabeth Fugel. Thank you. And lastly, we have several individual championship uh, uh, track uh, athletes to honor. And so I'm going to ask them all to come up, uh, starting with South Hagerstown and the Smithsburg group, and then uh, North Hagerstown followed. From South Hagerstown, Nate Harris Moore. <laughs> Nate was the 3A high jump champion this year. Smithsburg. Yeah, Smithsburg. Do I have them all the way here? Do yeah. In Smithsburg, we had. Four state champions. Um, the first one is not with us today. Bree Rao, she won the discus for 1A, which was her second um, consecutive championship. She was outdoor champion last year in the discus. Um, with us today, we have Lauren Daniels, 400-meter champion, 1A. This is also Lauren's second consecutive. She was the champion last year in the same event. And then in the 3,200 meter girls, we have Erica Lindsay, <laughs> champion from 1A. Yeah. And then this next gentleman, I don't think he's a stranger to any of us. He's <laughs> been here several times. We have Will Merritt. Will is a two-time champion. He was a 1,600 meter and 3,200 meter. In both of those events, he was also state champion last spring as well. And then the next athlete um, from North Hagerstown High School, Ravon Dillard. <laughs> Ravon was a 3A triple jump state champion and just have to kind of say this in front because what he did was pretty as a former triple jumper I thought 43 feet was great when I did it as, in 1986 but Ravon jumped 48.5 which is a 3A state record and also a Washington County record so quite a feat this year congratulations to all these champions <laughs>
<laughs> it ain't happening now. <laughs> Back up. Yep. Mrs. Williams, I'll have some other report items in the second half of my report in a few minutes. Thank you, Dr. Michael. We have no old business to conduct today, so we'll move on to new business. Our first item under new business, Mr. Bakel, is our consent agenda. <laughs> you looked a little hesitant there. My agenda had gone before you got off. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, today I have uh, nine items for your review, the details of which were included in your packets. Uh, staff is seeking approval for the award of RFP 2017-39 for an electric combi, I'm oh, sorry, an electric countertop combi oven and an electric tilting kettle for Smithsburg High School. Um, Douglas Equipment was awarded the Blodgett Electric Tilting Kettle at $17,426.46. And MTS Equipment was awarded the Unox Combi Oven at $14,850. Uh, staff is also seeking uh, approval for the award of RFP 2017-26 digital resource for the curriculum and instruction department to discovery education at a total cost of $252,510, and that's for a six-year digital license. Uh, the renewal of RFP 2016-11, maintenance parts and supplies to the 41 suppliers listed on the attachment. Uh, the approval to utilize Frederick County Public Schools RFP 16 miscellaneous five for Boonesboro High School's intercom replacement to high performance cabling at a total cost of $62,446.71. Uh, the approval to utilize uh, the meet contract UMD-972016 for 30 Apple MacBook laptops and 30 Apple iPads to Apple Incorporated uh, at a total cost of $38,853.90. <coughs> the approval of the digital curriculum for secondary education to Apex Learning Digital Curriculum <coughs> Solutions at a total cost of $343,200. The approval of uh, professional services, services for internal school auditing services to Ronald Schiffler CPA at a total cost of $79,825. The approval of the Diagnostic 
and interim student assessment to Center Point Education Solutions at a total cost of $114,810. And the approval of the Teacher Observation Software Program annual license renewal to Frontline Education at a total cost of $54,000. $885.60. And staff is available if you have any additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to approve the awards, renewals, and procurements for an electric countertop combi oven to Douglas Equipment at a total price of $17,426.46 and an electric tilting kettle to MTS Equipment at a total price of $14,850. Digital resources for the Curriculum and Instruction Department to Discovery Education, Inc. at a total cost of $252,510. Maintenance parts and supplies to the suppliers listed on the attachment. Boonesboro High School Intercom Replacement Installation to High Performance Cabling Corporation at a total price of $62,446.71. 30 Apple MacBook Air laptops and 30 Apple iPads to Apple at a total price of $38,000. $853.90 digital curriculum for secondary education to Apex Learning Digital Curriculum Solutions at a total cost of $343,200. Internal auditing services to Ronald Schiffler CPA at a total cost of $79,825. Diagnostic and interim student assessments to Center Point Education Solutions at a total cost of $114,800. $114,810 and Teacher Observation Software Program Annual License Renewal at a total cost of $54,885.60. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. <coughs> Questions or discussion? Mrs. Fisher. Per year? Yes, per you year. did say the front frontline observation. Is that yes? That's correct. I was wondering if we could come up with our own sometime or next year. This was a lot, I think, of year to pay for observation software. I think it would take a lot of time and effort. Um, right now this the system does all of our calculations for all of the SLOs for all of the evaluation. Teachers have it anytime, anywhere, any place. They can print any observation down, any kind of data from anything. So absolutely, I mean, we could, we could work towards that, but right now this is probably the best system for that. Number seven, professional service, internal school auditing services. Um, that item was not bid? Correct. That, um, that gentleman, and I, Chris can talk to it, has been um, <coughs> for this. This uh, was not bid. It is professional service and board policy uh, stipulates that professional services do not have to be bid. Uh, Mr. Uh, get, Mr. Uh, uh, Schiffler has been with uh, been our internal auditor now for a little over two years. Uh, he took over uh, when uh, our previous internal auditor uh, became very very ill, uh, caught us back up, and uh, has has moved forward uh, from that point. Uh, the 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 contract is uh, uh, financially in the same pretty much in the same ballpark as what we have been paying our auditor for for many many our internal auditor for many many years, and. Uh, the, the, the reason, one of the other reasons it was not bid is just there's an extremely long learning curve uh, with this position. Not only does this person have to learn all of our financial policy, board financial policies, accounting procedural policies, uh, school accounting policies, this, this individual is also the go-to person for any issues uh, related to our uh, uh, school accounting software. So uh, needs to be schooled in that also, and he is uh, he he is that he is schooled in all of that. Thank you for the explanation. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor 
of approval of the excuse me of the consent agenda as presented by Mr. Bakel. Raise your hand, please. Six to zero. Thank you, Mr. Bakel. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next agenda item is the educational facilities master plan. With Mr. Rollins and Mr. Criswell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, President Williams, board members, and Dr. Michael. We're here seeking the board's approval of the 2017 Educational Facilities Master Plan. This plan is updated annually and becomes the basis for current and future capital funding requests. Highlights of the plan include the uh, BOE component of the Urban Educational Campus, Sharpsburg Elementary School Replacement, Western Heights Middle, Springfield Middle, Hickory Elementary School Modernizations, and various systemic renovation projects. On May 16th, the plan was presented to the board in work session with consent to bring the plan to this meeting for approval. The plan's also been presented to the Facilities Enrollment Advisory Committee and to county planning staff and letters signifying the consent of each were included in your package. Now we can answer any questions you have at this time. Thank you. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2017 Educational Facilities Master Plan. Thank you, Mr. Gessert. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. Discussion? Questions for Mr. Rollins and Mr. Criswell? Nothing? Then we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of approving the Educational Facilities Master Plan, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. We're back to you. Okay. This afternoon we have a, a couple other pieces of the superintendent's report. This time I'd like to call forward Tom Klein. Uh, he'd like to make a presentation. And Eric Meredith, uh, principal of Pangborn Elementary School. Good afternoon, uh, Mrs. Williams and other esteemed uh, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Michael and uh, staff of Washington County Public Schools. As many of you know, the mission of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Washington County is to provide children facing adversity with strong and enduring relationships um, that are professionally supported to change their lives for the better forever. We could not achieve our mission without the support of our community partners. For the last 33 years, we have held our annual Bowl for Kids Sake a fundraiser at Turner's Dual Lanes in Hagerstown to raise funds to support our operations. With hundreds of business sponsors and bowlers who collect donations, this has been an amazing fundraiser for our agency. This year, we had over 150 business sponsors and more than 70 bowling teams, raising over $46,000. Our Bowl for Kids Sake has received significant support from Washington County Public Schools. Each year, more than a dozen teams from the school system raise funds and come and bowl at the event. Four years ago, we began holding a fun competition between the participating schools to see which school could raise the most. I'm here today to present a trophy to Pangborn Elementary School for their amazing support of our Bowl for Kids Sake. Um, for the fourth year in a row, Pangborn Elementary School won the friendly competition between the participating schools, raising nearly $1,000. Over the last four years, they've raised nearly $4,000 in support of our mission. I want to thank Principal Eric Meredith and his staff for their amazing support uh, year after year. In addition to providing a world-class education for their students, uh, they, have in, they are engaged in their community and truly make a difference. I want to say congratulations to Mr. Meredith and the Pangborn Elementary School staff and present them with this trophy. Meredith, before you get away, this isn't the first time that I've seen you here representing your school with this trophy. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I've got uh, four years. Uh, uh, okay, and you're going for a fifth? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, and congratulations. 
Okay, at this time I'd like to continue my report uh, with another expansion of a partnership. Uh, the Washington County Free Library is one of our partners. We uh, have any number of, of uh, ventures we have with them, and uh, Ms. Jonna French and Mary Bicon are here today, and they're going to share a bit, little bit about a new memorandum of understanding we have. with all of my presentations. So. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Michael and the Board of Education members. Um, today we are here to sign the Memorandum of Understanding between Washington County Public Schools and the Washington County Free Library for an exciting new project. We are proud today to announce the Rail Car Program, which ensures that all Washington County students have a Washington County Free Library card on their first day of school. The rail card, which stands for Raising Access to Improve Literacy, is a virtual library card which will provide easy and equitable access to all Washington County Free Library electronic resources and students may borrow up to three print items. I'd like to thank the following Washington County individuals for their assistance with this project. Uh, Derek Root, Lindsay Grossnickel, Joni Patterson, Ginger Clutter, and Jamie Schatzer. And I know Mary has some individuals that she would like to thank as well. Good evening, uh, members of the board and superintendent. Uh, we're delighted to be here today. And actually, this is a continuation of uh, a memo of understanding that was first signed uh, between the board and the Washington County Free Library in April of 2003. When this first partnership document was signed, the library and the Board of Education and our prospective staffs have worked closely together to bring new and exciting programs and events to the students of Washington County. And with our virtual library card, with the rail card, we are just so excited to, to take this to the next level. Uh, and I, uh, as Jana said, would like to acknowledge members of our staff who are in the audience today. I think many of you know our assistant director, Kathleen O'Connell. And Lisa Key, who is really the front line of the library, she is our head of our circulation. And Bill Taylor, who did such an excellent job getting all of the records into our, uh, our uh, system. I want to thank them profoundly and also thank your Jana, although I'm going to say our Jana because we're going to claim a little bit of her as well. Um, we are looking forward to having our uh, kids come into the library. We all know that. Uh, from third to third grade, you're teaching our children to read, and then from third grade on, you're, they're reading to learn. And we, as you are, are very concerned about the summer slide, and we think this is going to be a great tool to help our children come back in September ready to read and ready to learn. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ladies, be before you go, I have to tell you that um, I'm old enough to remember when the Washington County Public Library and the Washington County Free Library was on Summit Avenue. And um, I spent a lot of time walking two and a half blocks to that library. And um, it was a wonderful day when I was able to um, move across the hall from the children's section to the section of mysteries that awaited me in the adult section. Um, and then when we built the new library downtown, um, I was in high school. And that was just so exciting for us. Um, by that time, I was doing research. And uh, I just want to thank you for empowering our students with this virtual library card. I know for many of them, it will mean We've had just strong, so much. We had a strong partnership for so many years, and it only grows stronger. Uh, and this is absolutely not only with our central library, the Fletcher, but all seven branches in the Bookmobile. Okay. A child can come in and check out free books, no fines, right. no That's fines. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And we need a signature, didn't we? <laughs> we can take care of that. We can do it now or we can do it later. Okay. Thank you.
here. And our final report today uh, is an update on International Baccalaureate Program. Actually, a middle years program. Started to talk with Beth Allshouse back in the fall about this. Got very excited about the opportunity to kind of have the middle years program. Overlaps a school-wide initiative at the middle school and then overlaps into the high school uh, in ninth and 10th grade as well. So we have a number of presenters with us. I'll ask uh, Dr. Reinhardt if she would introduce everybody or everybody would introduce themselves and uh, make our presentation. Good afternoon, Madam President, Dr. Michael, and members of the board. I'm Jessica Reinhardt. I supervise pre-K-12 advanced programs. And yes, I do have um, my teammates here with me today to help present the updates to the International Baccalaureate programs. I have Beth Allshouse, a principal at um, Northern Middle School, and Mr. Jim Rossi, or James Rossi. Um, he is the middle years program coordinator and social studies teacher at Northern Middle. Mr. James Alshire, who is the principal of North Hagerstown High School, and Mr. Chris Downs, who is the lead teacher, middle years program coordinator, and international baccalaureate career related program coordinator. So we are going to go ahead and begin. Um, the last time we were here, we presented the um, International Baccalaureate Career Related Program. So we're gonna update you on that, but we wanna get started with the Middle Years Program first. So there are many benefits to having the Middle Years Program at both Northern Middle and North Hagerstown High School. We know that just as Western Heights Middle School integrated their um, arts integration program school-wide along with a magnet program, we plan to do the same for board, both Northern Middle and North Hagerstown High School. This allows um, not only a selected group of students to have a some school choice, um, for a highly gifted magnet program, but also schools, the students within that school district would have the opportunity to participate. The beauty of the middle years program is that it helps um, to broaden the lens on the school culture. It builds those bridges of understanding philosophically and the respect among various groups. And that sounds pretty good in this world we live in, right? It also prepares the students to meet the challenges that face them should they um, decide to go on, we hope they'll decide to go on, to the um, IB career-related program or the IB diploma program. The students could also have the opportunity to earn the middle years program certificate if they complete both the personal project and the community project. So really what exactly is this opportunity for students? It's the opportunity to deepen those relationships between Northern Middle School and North Hagerstown High School. It does work within global context um, to create, to increase their, the students' understanding of languages, not just their, what they call the, their mother tongue, but also other languages as well. Um, it is also designed to help them better understand cultures. It is learner-centered. It's about promoting healthy relationships, ethical responsibility, and personal challenge. And with the conceptual lens exploration, which is a unique facet of the curriculum, the students will um, be able to engage in experiences that offer them the lens on a multiple connections among the disciplines. So for example, if they are studying um, patterns in mathematics, they may be studying patterns of migration in social studies. So for those students who are seeking the middle years program certificate, this means an emphasis on intellectual challenge. Again, those connections between the subject areas and the real world, um, which is enhanced by that community project and the personal project. 
The Middle Years program is a five-year program. It starts at grade six and it culminates in grade 10. Um, so as I said earlier, the, the Middle Years program would be school-wide at Northern Middle and North Hagerstown High. Those, the 10 learner attributes, the international mindedness, that is a philosophical approach that both schools will, um, will achieve through their curriculum and through the school culture. But if the students decide that they're going to start at Northern Middle, they would be able to complete the community project by grade eight. And if they continue on with middle years program, in order to get the certificate, they would complete the personal project. Now, it doesn't mean that they have to start the program at Northern Middle School. We could have students start it at North Hagerstown High School. In that case, they would engage in the course of study and they would um, engage in the community service project in grade nine and complete the reflective project by uh, grade 10 or the personal project by grade 10. This would also allow them to continue on with those programs, the IBCP and the IBDP at North Hagerstown High School. So shifting gears, I mentioned the IBCP. We're going to update you. Um, we've had two exciting visits. Um, we've been receiving our professional development, of course, and we had someone come and work with us at um, North North Hagerstown High School on the IBCP, and then they came back this past May to do the authorization visit. So we're still waiting to see how things are, um, how things turn out from that. But we felt that the IBCP really allows the students to the flexibility to experience the college level courses within their selected areas of interest in terms <coughs> of their career. This will give them that opportunity to gain essential thinking skills and again that international mindedness that is necessary for the world of work and especially here in Washington County our ever-changing community. The IBCP completion is actually threefold. So if a student decides to engage in IBCP they could leave North Hagerstown High School with a USMH completer. So USM completer an MSDE CTE completer and the IB career related program certificate, not to mention having taken an exam that is related to their field, having that under their belt. So that's pretty impressive. Um, some of the feedback that I know Mr. Alshire has received along with his staff um, from Job Fair and the Economic Commission is that they really want the students to have those soft skills and we felt that the personal and professional skills aspect of the IBCP builds what's necessary for the success in the workplace. Um, this program attracts those students who are not only passionate about their academics, but they're also passionate about a career path. So that really helps to kind of bridge that divide and expand the teacher training and expand the philosophy. We want our Washington County students to graduate, go to college, or go to a technical or trade school and come back to us. But they need to have the um, preparation in order to do so. And we feel that this sets them on the course to be successful. You can see that the earning of the IBCP certificate includes several facets. The personal and professional skills, the language development, the service learning and the reflective project. And I mentioned the coursework. They would take between two and four, either standard level or the more advanced level, the higher level courses. The students, in order to get that certificate, they complete their, um, the MSDE completer course of study. They take those courses and they need to earn a score of three or higher on the IB exams that are associated with the courses that they take. And so what you see here are the four areas that uh, Mr. Alshire and his team have selected as the best paths to pursue for the IBCP. So we're looking at the computer science, 
those students would get to take both the AP and IB computer science exams. The food and beverage management program, they would take the ProStart exam. Hospitality and tourism, they would have the American Hotel and Lodging and Educational Institute exam, very large mouthful there. And then the Teacher Academy students would take the Parapro uh, Praxis. And so that completes our updates. Questions? So the group just described, or as Dr. Reinhardt just described, two kind of separate pieces that are going on, our career path that we're expanding at North High as well as the new program from uh, Northern Middle School. Beth, I don't know if you wanted to make maybe one minute's worth of comments about what you think it's going to do for Northern Middle School or the opportunities it's going to bring to your, to your students. Sure. Um, so the IB Middle Years program is very um, inquiry-based. Um, it's about inquiry, action, and reflection, and a constant cycle of that. Um, I think it's really going to push our students and our teachers um, to the next level. They're very excited. We've, we met with staff, um, Jim and I, on the last day of school, and we um, really set them up for what's going to happen next year and what will be expected and what the trainings will look like and how instruction might change, um, but how it also may look a little bit the same. Um, we had a, a great response from staff, very good feedback. Everybody's very excited to be part of it. Okay, well, there you have a couple groups going to training this summer. We do. We have a group that's going to Austin, Texas in July. Um, we had a group that just returned from Florida in May and another group that will go um, to, Flor to Florida in September. Um, so there'll be continuous trainings going on until everyone is trained and we're fully up and running. Okay. Well, James, probably the quietest I've seen you in five or ten minutes all at once here. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody from your staff would just want to share a little bit about uh, what the expansion of the uh, career park is going to bring to North High. Well, I think the, the career program, um, you know, what I really, the, I'm, I'm very passionate about CTE programs within our county uh, and what they bring to our students. I think this, uh, the CP program uh, kind of puts an added twist on what our CTE programs are in our building. Um, and I think it includes everyone then. Uh, which I'm very excited about. When we learned a little bit about the program and national conference, it was just something that kind of it ju just jumped off the page and said, "Hey, we need to have this. This is this is something that we need as an addition to our program." Um, and with that program as well as the MYP program, uh, you know what I see is truly a community connection. The Northern Middle School staff and the high school staffs working together. Um, you know we've done some some group professional development. Uh, and communication, it's just, and it's it's really creating a community uh, on our entire campus. With that, we certainly would entertain any questions the board might have. I think it's going to be another um, great opportunity for our students in Washington County at both of these schools. Thanks very much okay. for coming Thank in. Dr. Yeah. Michael, if I may, I wanted to um, give a special thanks to Mr. Downs and Mr. Rossi. They put so many hours into the completion of the application, and um, no one here said it. I was hoping they would chime in and, um, and brag, but they have been, um, they are now authorized as a candidate school, two candidate schools for the middle years program. So this becomes, begins the journey officially for them, and that took a lot of work. So a huge thank you to them. It's a team effort. All right. Thank you, everybody. We thank appreciate you. you coming thank in. You. Thank you. Probably the last comment I'd have for today uh, is obviously the newspaper in the last couple of weeks. Dr. Harding has been named to the State Board of Education, and I think uh, that's going to can't certainly can't hurt Washington County Public Schools in any way to be represented in Baltimore. And, uh, just wanted to make that note. Uh, his son Ben was just here a few minutes ago. We had an opportunity to shake his hand. Uh, but we do want to congratulate Dr. Cardings uh, for his appointment. I know we have someone else in the audience, but I think it would be more appropriate maybe for someone else to introduce that person here in the, over the course of the meeting. So with that, I'll conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael. Our next agenda item is personnel action. Dr. Pugh.
<laughs> Madam President, I'm here to seek your approval for um, the uh, discussions earlier today for um, hiring. Is there a motion, yeah, please? So I move. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, let me sort that out, Mrs. <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> Any questions or discussion regarding the personnel actions? All those in favor of approving the personnel actions discussed earlier today? Th thank you, six to zero. Thank you, Dr. Pugh. That brings us to uh, reports to the board. And we'll have board member committee reports. Mr. Bickford, would you like to begin? Sure. Finance Committee meets this Thursday at 8 a.m. in the Finance Committee meeting room. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gasford. Well, thank you. Uh, facilities met this morning. Um, we had an update on the uh, Hagerstown Urban Revitalization Project um, and also a little bit about the Sharpsburg Project and how it is moving forward and on schedule. Uh, we had um, some maintenance and planning development. Uh, Mark and Rob were able to bring us up to date on that. Community partnerships. Um, we went over the bid updates that we'll be bringing forth um, to the board here in the next uh, few months. And um, we just had a quick discussion on the educational uh, facility master plan today. And uh, that's all we have. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Actually, I was wondering if Mr. Gessford had some kind of an update on the urban project. Has anything changed, moved? At this time, there has not been any change. They are working through um, the funding part of it, and um, I think they're meeting every two weeks um, now during the summer for a while, so we're waiting for more updates on that also. Thank you. But right now, we are waiting on uh, the funding part to come through um, and hoping that we'll um, keep us on track. Very good. Yep. Mrs. Fisher? Um, policy committee met May 23rd for a public comment meeting concerning the three fundraising policies that it seems like we've been working with forever. <laughs> um, we were joined by two individuals who have worked for a number of years for incorporated fundraising school groups. Um, we discussed three or four concerns, found solutions to those concerns, um, our next meeting will be tomorrow at 9.30 in the board meeting room next door, and we hope that very soon these policies will be, come, will be adopted by the board and um, the committee can move on to something else. I also have curriculum and instruction committee notes. Um, they also met on May 23rd. Amy Seiler, who is our middle school math content specialist, and Dr. April Briss Bishop, Supervisor of Math and Science, presented an overview of Discovery's Middle School Math Digital Resources, for which we approved a bid just a few moments ago. Um, <clears throat> this program uses real-world problems to engage students' interests, and it's aligned with the college and career curriculum standards. Dr. Pugh, the Associate Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, reviewed the accountability update for the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, for elementary, middle, and high school students. And this framework identifies various measures for um, recording success in a number of categories, including academic progress, English language proficiency, college and career readiness. And then finally, Dr. Pugh also presented an overview of the work plan on improving supports for struggling students. Their work centers on strengthening the following categories, teacher practice, using data to inform instruction, and providing additional time from content experts. CNI's next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Tuesday, June 13th, at 10.30 in the board meeting room. That's Thank it. you, Mrs. Fisher. Mr. Ridenow? Yes, the HR committee will not meet again until the uh, end of July. Uh, we have a new HR director. Um, I will get together with her and see what we need to put in our agenda, and it will take place end of next month. Okay. Thank you very much. And 
that brings us to uh, miscellaneous business consideration of future agenda items. Future agenda items are listed uh, for you. We have several updates coming up. Um, and we have one very, very important um, future date coming up, and that's June 20th, which will be the swearing in of our recently appointed member of the board. And uh, I'd like to recognize and welcome Mrs. Linda Murray. Congratulations on your appointment, Mrs. Murray. And I welcome you to the board. I look forward to working with you. And uh, I know you'll hit the ground running. Mrs. Murray will be seated for her first meeting on July 11th and uh, sometime between June 20th and July 11th we'll be doing a new member orientation. So I understand that Mabe has a new member <coughs> orientation scheduled for sometime in August, mid-August. So you have that to look forward to Mrs. Murray. So we'll move to board member comments. Would you like to begin Mr. Ridenauer? Uh -huh. Mrs. Fisher. Um, nothing in particular. It's a beautiful day out there. Go enjoy it. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you. Mr. Gasford. Uh, yes, a, just an extended congratulations to Mrs. Murray. Um, glad that she'll be joining us. Um, and two employees that we had, and of course there's so many of them, but uh, two that I have had a lot of contact with in the last year uh, who are retired, uh, Jeff Stauffer. Uh, just want to congratulate him on his retirement. And another gentleman who is normally here in support of his wife, uh, Dave Williams, who is retiring. Congratulations to Dave and all the years that he has been a teacher. Um, and also just an extended thank you to all the teachers, ESP uh, personnel, and uh, all of the staff. Um, please have a great summer. Thank you for all that you have done over this past year. Enjoy it. Hope you get a little... R and R, so we can get back, and uh, hopefully the uh, students will enjoy this long summer break and come back rejuvenated and ready to uh, start another school year. So, congratulations to all the teachers. Mr. Stafford, uh, I wasn't here at the last board meeting, but uh, since then I had the opportunity to attend the uh, 24 event, the math event, and it was quite interesting to see how quick those students are to. Uh, do those exercises. Uh, also had the pleasure of attending the Fire Academy graduation at South Hagerstown High School and also had the pleasure of with uh, Dr. Akers of attending the Smithsburg High School and Williamsport High School uh, uh, graduations this week. Uh, enjoyed that very much and congratulations to Mrs. Murray on joining the board. Thank you Mr. Stafford. Mr. Bickford. Um, I, w I wanted to say it was an honor to take part in the graduations. It was, it was pretty, I thought it was pretty neat how they were all different and had the personality of their schools. Um, and, uh, and, and so thank you for allowing us to be part of that. Um, and I thought it was pretty neat that we get to be the ones that uh, read the legal language that allows them to be graduates. I didn't know that was a perk of the job. So Linda, you'll be ready for that next year. Um, I also want to congratulate Linda as well. Being on the nominating committee, I can tell you that uh, she did a fantastic presentation um, and I believe was unanimously supported from the nominating committee. Um, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Mrs. Williams, before you finish, I, j I need one more second. Uh, one other person, and I'm not sure when his last day, but it has been a privilege to work with Chris Sal. I know he is retalent retiring and uh, I just didn't know when his last day was but I just wanted to say thank you Chris for all that you've done for Washington County Schools and I'm not sure when your last day is so maybe I'll get to say it again but before I uh, didn't know that date I wanted to make sure that I said thank you. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Allshire. Um, I had the opportunity to speak at one graduation um, this year and it was North Eggerstown High School. It was um, the first time that I had attended a graduation in 49 years. The last one I attended there was uh, my own. 
And so um, it was a privilege and an honor to be there. And I would just like to say to Mr. Allshire, there is no mistaking the sense of community that you have built and continue to build at North Eggerstown High School. Uh, I stood on that stage and shook the hands of, I think, um, 232 uh, graduates. And um, I watched your guidance counselor give a hug to every one of them. And I heard those students thank her with the greatest sincerity. Um, so I know good things are happening at North High, and it was a, a real privilege and an honor for me to be a part of that graduation this year. So thank you, Mr. Allshire. So if there's no further comments, did you have anything that you wanted to say, Dr. Michael, before we end this no, evening? I have one thing I just okay. remembered that I was supposed to say, but you go ahead. Okay. I'm excited about a presentation we have coming up on June 20th. It'll be about our summer learning program, reading program. Staff has worked very hard to pull that together. So on uh, June 20th, we can anticipate a presentation from a number of staff people that have pulled that together. Obviously, we've kicked off our summer feeding program, started on Monday, and uh, we're in full swing here for summer already. So, Thank you. Um, I just remembered that uh, we are headed downtown to the Maryland Theater at the invitation of the Maryland Theater Board for a social event. And uh, some of our board members will be attending. And I understand that uh, there'll be some folks from the Barbara Ingram board there and perhaps some folks uh, from city and county government as well. So we look forward to this uh, opportunity to uh, be social. Uh, 4.30, I believe. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. That's right. Our end time today was scheduled for 4.30, and we're to be there at 5 o'clock. So we've got plenty of time to get down there, find parking, and get into the theater. So, so with that, we'll adjourn. Thank you.